Welcome to the Level Up English podcast, the best place to come to practice the English language, learn about the British accent and culture. With me, your host, Michael Lavers. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to the podcast. Michael here. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I have got a very, very exciting episode. It sounds boring. It's not. I promise it's going to be interesting. We're talking about law today. The topic of law and illegal things. Okay, it's not going to be as boring as it sounds because I don't know much about law. So I'm going to make it fun and we're going to be learning some expressions, discussing some areas surrounding this topic of law. So I, I make a lot of plans for my private lessons around different topics and my group lessons as well. And this is a topic that I stole from one of my group lesson ideas about the idea of law. And I, I kind of gave a lot of questions to the, the members of the group where we practiced talking about this topic. And I thought it could be a great topic to bring to the podcast as well. Maybe to talk about this in a bit more detail and yeah, maybe let you guys in on the conversation too. I want to hear what you think as always as well. I, I do want to say briefly that if you want to get some free lessons and you want to get updates from me and twice a month motivation and language learning tips, then you can check out the email list. If you go to the homepage, levelupenglish.school. At the bottom of that page, there is a section that says, want free lessons? Just enter your email and you will get five free lessons sent directly to your email. So that's a nice thing to do if you want to see some of the things I'm doing, some of the pronunciation lessons, other lessons that I'm doing that you can check out over there and study for free. And if you don't, want the free lessons. You could even get paid lessons if that's more your kind of cup of tea. And that is at Level Up English members. So you can get transcripts, group lessons. Uh, what else do we have? Private podcast, IELTS exam training course, pronunciation course, writing course, many things like that at levelupenglish.school and click on the members button. Now, I always get questions about people asking for free lessons and that's what I have. You know, whether you want free lessons or you want to pay and you want a little bit more content, I've got options for everyone, I hope. So hopefully everyone's happy and maybe you're the kind of person that says, Michael, I don't care. I just want to listen and get on with the episode. Well, for that kind of person, I am going to do just that. So let's continue now and thank you for your patience. So you're on this topic of laws and justice, laws and justice. There's a lot that I've been thinking about. One quote that I found that I often started my group classes with on this topic was this one I found online, which is laws are like cobwebs, which may catch small flies, but let wasps and hornets break through. Does that mean anything to you? So I think the comparison here is that a law can be implemented and used against small people, right? People like you know, everyday lawbreakers. You know, if you steal a hundred pounds from a shop, you can be arrested. But then maybe there's politicians who are corrupt in stealing, you know, thousands or millions of pounds and because they are so powerful, they are not affected by the law. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe corruption is a big problem in your country? Maybe not. I don't know. We've had a lot of this talk recently in the UK. I don't, I don't usually get political, partly because I just don't really care. But this isn't really so political. But in the UK recently, we've had a problem with the Prime Minister, good old Boris Johnson, who was accused of attending parties during the COVID-19 lockdown. And he was accused of breaking the rules and he was even fined by the police. I mean, I think he was fined like 50 pounds. I might be wrong. I don't, I haven't been following it so closely, but from what I saw, he was fined 50 pounds, 
which just seems ridiculous when you consider how much money he makes. It's like a drop in the water to his wealth. You know, it just doesn't seem to make much difference. But yeah, that, that, that's that been a bit of a contentious topic recently. It's causing a lot of debates and discussion and arguments and a lot of people are maybe losing trust in well, what little trust they had in the government is being lost. I don't know about that. One question I would like to ask all you guys, something to think about, is if you could make one law that everyone had to follow, what would it be? This is a good example of a second conditional question. We're using the second conditional, not, not the first conditional, because it's unlikely to happen. Now, you are unlikely to be able to enforce this law, but if you were, what would you do? What would you do? I've been thinking about this myself. I, I think one paradox here, one problem, is that if you enforce a law, it immediately becomes not cool. I, I don't know how else to say it, but if you're made to do something, it becomes something you don't want to do. Like, if I eat broccoli, I'm happy to eat broccoli, I like it, but as a child, my parents would force me to eat broccoli, and therefore I hated it. So there's this difference here, like, if, if you're forced to do it, it's so much harder to do something, I feel, because you, you want to kind of rebel against the, the law or the authority. But one idea that I had was, what if everyone in school went through kind of meditation classes. I think that could make such a profound difference in the world if everyone in the world at least had some experience with meditation. It doesn't mean they have to do it every day, but at least they had some training and some experience with meditating and quietening their mind, thinking before they react, and maybe just having more awareness of their the themselves, their desires, and the present moment, I feel like it could stop a lot of violence and misunderstandings in the world. But Maybe you might think I'm giving too much importance to the power of meditation, but I feel like that could be a good law to enforce, perhaps. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what would be a good law? If, you, if everyone could follow one law, what would you like it to be? Hmm. Yeah, I'll keep thinking about this. Maybe there'll be some good ones that I think of later on. But there's also that idea, that common saying that rules are made to be broken. Rules are made to be broken. Have you heard that before? Rules are made to be broken. I mean, this is, this is commonly what people say right before breaking a rule. You're climbing over a fence that says no entry. And someone's like, hey, you can't do that. You're not allowed in there. And then they look back and say, rules are made to be broken. And they jump over the fence. And that was the last time you saw them before they're arrested. <laughs> do you agree with this phrase? Maybe what laws have you broken yourself? I wonder if you've broken any laws. I think many people might agree that maybe laws are not always made equal, right? Some people think, some laws are okay to break. We can break these ones, but not these ones. And of course, there is a hierarchy, right? Hurting someone is much worse than you know, stealing a piece of chocolate from a supermarket, right? Not that I would do either, but I think there is a difference. They're not all equal in morality. And in the eyes of the law, they're not equal to. And that's a good phrase, by the way, in the eyes of the law or in the eye of the law. This means from the perspective of the law. In the eyes of the law, these things are not equal. But you know, maybe there is an argument to be made that some rules can be broken. I don't know. I remember when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I tried to force myself to break more rules, which sounds a bit weird, but I was a real goody two-shoes. I don't know why we say that. Goody two-shoes is a common saying that just means someone who's really well behaved and they always do as they're told. A goody two-shoes. 
very strange phrase now that I think of it. But I was a goody two-shoes and I always did as I was told. And I kind of wondered, what would life be like if I wasn't so much like this? So a few things I did, like little things. Like for example, there was a fence that says no entry. And I thought, hmm, what if I climbed the fence and went into the area that says no entry? What could I find? Uh, I'm, one time I kind of climbed under a bridge and went to this kind of island surrounded by a river and I wasn't supposed to be there, but it was really cool. It was, it was, there was nothing really there. There was just some you know, very overgrown foresty area, but it's kind of a cool thing to see. And I, I kind of felt like a bad boy, you know, oh, I'm breaking the rules here, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a lot of you break more rules than me. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what rules you've broken. If you do like to follow rules strictly and carefully, you might do things by the book. This expression here, by the book, is a common one, which just means you do things in the official way without cutting corners. We'll come back to that expression in a minute. But to do something by the book is often used in work. You know, there's usually like some kind of manual or instructions on how you should do your job. And if you do it by the book, you're doing it exactly as your boss or your manager wants you to do it. Maybe your job is to interview people, for example, and your boss will say, hey, do this by the book. Don't improvise. Do it by the book. Yeah, so follow the rules. Don't stray from the book. Don't stray from the rules, right? And the other expression I mentioned was to cut corners. Cut corners. Imagine you're walking around a field and rather than walking around the edge of the field, you cut the corner so you don't walk around the whole field, but you make it quicker. So cutting corners is doing a task and doing it more quickly, but perhaps to a lower level of quality. Yeah, so some people like to do things perfectly. They are perfectionists. However, other people like to cut corners and get the job done quickly and it's just acceptable. Yeah, it's okay. I could have done better, but I cut the corners. There have been times in the past where I have cut corners in my work, for example. So when I make a YouTube video, I used to make subtitles for all of the YouTube videos and it took me so long to do that. And then eventually I decided to stop doing the subtitles and I just started cutting corners because it was quicker and I could focus on the video rather than all these subtitles. So that was kind of an example of cutting corners where the quality was worse, but I was able to work more quickly. But I think cutting corners is not the same as, you know, killing two birds with one stone. So for example, now I am recording the video and the audio for this podcast so I can upload a YouTube version and the podcast version. You can listen to both examples now. And that is a good example of killing two birds with one stone. I'm recording once, but I'm uploading it into two places. But it's not sacrificing on the quality. I hope not, anyway. A really good question to think about as well is what laws you would like to abolish? What rules would you like to abolish? Abolish means kind of cancel, get rid of, Imagine you have a law and you're ripping it in half. You're abolishing that law. And I mean, there are some laws that exist that many of us might think are not really that appropriate. They're not useful. And I, there's probably a lot that I could think of. I can't think of many right now. Um, but one I think many people would agree on, very controversial actually, is arresting people who have like minor drug offences. Some of you may agree, I hope you don't get too mad at me, but I really believe that, you know, arresting someone because they did a little, you know, some drugs is kind of a waste of time. It's a waste of the taxpayer's money to have to pay for them to go through the imprisonment system. And if they have a drug problem, I would much rather see them get some help, you know, get some help to overcome their addiction or work on the cause of their drug problem with a professional rather than being locked up with, you know, 
murderers and horrible people in prison, I don't think that's going to help them. So that's one law I would like to abolish or maybe at least change, not necessarily abolish. But I know that is a controversial one. So you're welcome to share your opinion with me as long as you're polite. (laughs) And now a debate topic that I will give my students in this group class is the topic of CCTV, which I believe stands for closed circuit television. That's off the top of my head, it might be right. But these are these security cameras that you might see on the edge of buildings and on the top of lampposts and things like that, inside buildings as well, right? So the UK is quite well known, infamous perhaps, for having many CCTV cameras. We have lots of these cameras everywhere and the debate topic here is I feel more comfortable with more CCTV cameras in public. Agree or disagree? I mean, there's something to be said for not feeling like you're being watched. I think it's quite uncomfortable when you, you feel like you're always being watched. First of all, let me know what you think. Firstly, does your country have many cameras on the streets? And whether it does or not, what do you think about it? Do you feel safer with more cameras? Or would you prefer to have le- fewer cameras, but more freedom and more privacy? Yeah? I-, I have mixed feelings on this, but I think mostly I like the cameras, especially in London, because it's not the safest city to live in. You know, there are violent people every now and then. It's a big city, of course, so it's bound to happen somewhere. And I feel a lot safer knowing that there's a camera on the street. But sometimes it does get a little bit overwhelming where you look up and you feel like, you know, Big Brother is watching you. Not that I'm doing anything wrong, but it just kind of feels like I I don't have this freedom that I want to. It's hard to put into words, but I, I guess you know what I mean. You look up on the street, you see cameras on every building, cameras in the train, train station, cameras outside and inside shops. There's really like everywhere you are in London, there's a camera watching you. And I imagine a lot of these cameras are not actually being monitored. Maybe they only check if there's actually a crime. So that's kind of my justification that I don't really mind. Lots of things to think about here. So have a think about it. Let me know what you think about all these topics. But I think I'm going to end it here today because my voice is getting a little bit coarse and probably I need some water, but... Let's just go to say a quick thank you to two podcast reviews today. We're going to Saudi Arabia again today. So we've got one here from Ezra who says, You are amazing. I did not think that I would have fun listening to podcasts. This is my first time to enter this application. And this is my first podcast I listen to. Wow. You are amazing and I will listen to all all of what you have made. Thank you so much from Saudi Arabia. I am so honoured to be the first podcast you listen to, and I hope it's a good one. I hope you don't find too many better ones and forget about me. But yeah, thank you for saying that. And, oh, I was wrong before. This one is from Yemen, from Asma007, who said, Hi, Michael. I just wanted to say thank you for your amazing, beneficial, easy to understand and entertaining podcast. Thank you for your time to give us great content to help us improve our language, our English language. I'm glad that I found your podcast. I really like your quotes you share with us on the podcast. It has deep meaning and it's touching. Kind regards from Yemen. Thank you very much. That's very kind. I'm glad you like the quotes as well. So really appreciate your time to leave that long and heartwarming review. So thank you, Ezra, Asma, and everyone else. And now that you've mentioned the quote, let's end with one. So this one, I don't know who said it, but this is one of my favorites, which is the same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. So the same 
boiling water that softens the potato, hardens the egg. It's what you're made of, not the circumstances. What you're made of is important, not the circumstances. Think about that one. I think it's very meaningful and deep. I'm not going to explain it though. Have just have a think about it. But yeah, for now, I'll leave it here. So thank you for listening and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks so much. Goodbye. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.